So is technology helping or hurting our students' creativity? As a research professor at Tufts University and one who does research and development into educational technologies, and I certainly use lots of these types of tools in my own classroom, in my own teaching, this is a question that I think about daily, I would say. And it's something that I think is really important as we think about our students' creativity and that need for our students to be creative and the impact that that education technology has. The world is facing greater and greater problems. These are some of the selection of the grand challenges proposed by the National Academy of Engineering. Things that we are facing as a society, as a world, and these problems ranging from, of course, education, but also space exploration and, and civil infrastructure, pollution. These are not problems that are gonna be solved with simple solutions. They're gonna require creativity and innovation and advanced ideas in order to overcome this. And tomorrow's problem solvers are today's children, right? Those of our children that are in our classrooms and so it's important that we're thinking about how we are training these children to become those problem solvers. And if they need creative solutions later, they need to be working on creativity now in the classroom. And so what is that role that technology is playing in that space? We're introducing more and more technologies into our lives, into our children's lives. And so we should understand what the impact of that has on their creativity if we want to be properly developing them to solve these problems tomorrow. So when I do my own technology development or when I evaluate other people's technologies, I have four things that I like to think about as I'm doing that. And I wanna share with you today those four ideas. And some of us here are parents and we're putting technology into our own children's hands so you can think about these ideas. If you're a teacher yourself, and you're introducing technology into your classroom, how are you picking the technologies that come in? And if you're in policy, if you're in politics and making system-wide decisions about technologies, these are things to think about as well. The first is, is technology bringing students together or keeping them apart? The skills of collaboration, communication, these other 21st century soft skills are important. And so how is the technology playing a role in a space like that. Sure, I love VR goggles, right? I mean, this is some cool high-end tools that open up possibilities for students to, to explore spaces that they aren't physically in. But if we are physically together, let's be together. Let's not introduce a technology that takes students who are co-located and separates them, that actually spreads them apart. Instead, let's think about the tools that we bring in that brings them together, that has them sharing ideas with each other, that allows them to co-construct new knowledge based on each other's ideas, not separating those ideas apart. I love the idea of giving one laptop per child, but maybe there's instances where actually being around a single piece of technology will actually increase that level of collaboration, will in increase the exchange of ideas, and thus increase things like collaboration. Point two, is technology enabling students to explore or is it dictating their experience? We often bring technology in that is there to support students but in a prescribed way. For instance, in robotics we see this a lot. You might have the most advanced robot come into the classroom experience but how is the student interacting with that? Are they just watching it move? Are they just watching it dance? Are they able to control and influence that? Are they coming to a deeper understanding of how that robot is actually functioning? To do that, I believe doing it through a hands-on project-based way will then enable those students a deeper appreciation of robotics, a fundamental understanding of what happens, to be able to create themselves, to be able to make that, will thus increase their own experience so on the left there, you see uh, the Lego Education Spike Prime, the new robotic tool set that comes out. Instead of watching a robot dance, let's have them actually build that robot themselves. Come to understand how the functioning parts work, have them program it, have them have 
control over that experience. And actually through that process, it's, there'll be failures, but those failures will be opportunities for them to then explore and to learn deeper about how it works, to overcome those challenges, develop grit, perseverance, instead of just passively observing. We heard some about uh, um, assessment and tests. Do the assignments that we're giving, this is point three, do those assignments assess how the students are thinking themselves, or is it just quantifying the knowledge that they have acquired? Yes, that knowledge is out there. The Google results are out there. Are we just trying to transfer that into the students' heads and then measure that? Or do we actually want to know what they're thinking? Technology plays a role here as well, of course. Technology has played a great role in standardized testing in that we're able to process through all of this information very quickly. We're able to issue tests, we're able to understand what students know and generate those results, but at what cost? We're measuring things that are easy to measure in an automated way. Yet when we work with students one-on-one, -on -one, when we personalize that education, we start to deeper understand what is happening inside that student's head. We actually then start to understand what is the student thinking. This is Sejal here, one of my teaching assistants, working with a high school student in our makerspace as she works on a robotics project. That one-on-one -on -one interaction with the technology, with the student's ideas, Sejal gets to understand what that student is thinking, comes to a deeper understanding, thus resulting in better assessment of what they really know, of what they really understand, and the processes that they go through to get there. But this isn't scalable, right? But technology helps with this. So Sejal, as my teaching assistant, will, yes, work one-on-one -on -one with students, but also has to grade 70 projects. And the documentation tools that are being introduced into our classrooms where we're capturing the code students are writing, videos and pictures of their robots, system diagrams outlining what they are thinking and how they're solving the problems, she's able to now process all of that, give individualized feedback, and still scale that through the use of technology. So we can use technology in ways of better understanding what our students are doing in that way. And then I want to think about that teacher as well. So this point here, point four, is the teacher being supported or are they being replaced? We hear about the advances in AI, artificial intelligence. We hear about social robotics and the opportunity that a robot could be a teacher itself. We hear about digital avatars and how uh, digitalized education can direct the student and be responsive to that. But those tools aren't there yet. So let's not rush to replace that teacher. Instead, I want to see how the technology that we're introducing into the classroom is better supporting that teacher. That's me in the middle. <laughs> Working with uh, Sergio and Matias. And what I have here is through them doing this hands-on project, through the technologies that we've introduced, I've come to better understand who they are as individuals, what they know, what they understand, and I can then tailor the educational experience I give them based on that feedback. Yes, I give tests. I have tests in my class. I have midterms. We give a test around gear ratios, and I have them calculate out the, the fundamental understanding of this. But all my students do that because they've memorized a formula. They know how to plug and chug those numbers. But do they fundamentally understand the ratios between power and speed when you're doing gearing? That comes to light when they're suddenly doing a project like this, when they have to build their own gear train to try to manipulate and move the physical materials around. Suddenly, their misconceptions, their misunderstandings come to light to themselves, but also to me as the teacher. I get deeper understanding of who they are through these technologies, and then I can address those misunderstandings much better than the data that comes back from that exam. So here I've shared with you four different dimensions on which to sort of think about educational technologies, but it's only four. And actually, I have more that I could also share as well. But fundamentally, I also don't believe in lecture, which is what I'm doing now. <laughs> and here we are, co-located together, and yet you're just sitting there listening to me. 
And so let's take advantage of the fact that we're here together and have that conversation. Let's continue this conversation because I want to know what you value about the technology that's coming into your classroom. I want to know what you don't like about the technology, what you're scared of, and what changes, negative changes that you're seeing as well. So I hope we're able to sort of continue that conversation. Because I think it's fundamentally important that we think about the tools and technologies that we're putting into our students' hands, these students that will become the problem solvers of tomorrow's to solve those big, big problems in creative, innovative, new ways. And those tools and technologies are gonna inspire Owen here, inspire him to think differently, to be creative, to be an innovative, and no matter what field he goes into, if it's engineering, but even if it's into medicine or policy or economics, whatever it might be, we want him to be creative and innovative to solve those big problems. Thank you. <laughs>